It's raining hard in some places. I hope you guys are having a good Friday. My name is Garrett Hartle and I'm leaving Reach Out Reptiles. Until the 22nd of August, I'm going to the Pomona Reptile Show, and then I'll be getting in touch with some different rep West Coast reptile people, so you guys are probably going to want to stay tuned and see what happens on this channel here coming up. Uh, should be a lot of fun, but I didn't want to leave you without a free tip. I have a snake, maybe some of you guys can relate, and this little girl has been pushing her face. Okay, which means she was in her tub and she's trying to escape. She's testing all her boundaries. This happens a lot when you get a new one shipped in. And you can see her lips are getting a little bit swollen there. Now, I want to ship her out to a customer, but with swollen lips like that, she could actually injure herself further during the shipping process. So thankfully, I have amazing customers and they understood when I asked them if I could withhold shipping her just to let that swelling go down and to heal itself, allow me to correct it, in other words, and present them with an animal that is in tip-top shape. In the meantime, I thought maybe I should share with you guys a few tips of mine to get a super dwarf or other animal that's pushing on its cage a lot, how to, how to get it to stop doing that. And the reason why I thought this would be a good tip, you're so silly, this, the reason I thought this would be a good tip to share is because I can pretty much guarantee if you jump on a reptile forum or something and you say, help, my retic is pushing its face, what do I do? Everyone is basically going to tell you to feed it more often. But what do you do if you already have a healthy food schedule? Well, now you're asking me to do something that's actually unhealthy for the snake in order to correct a health issue. That doesn't really make sense, does it? So let me show you instead what we do. Now, nine times out of 10, when a reticulated python is pushing on its cage, it's because the temperatures are too hot in that cage and it's making the snake anxious to escape and cool off a little bit. So if your animal doesn't have any access to temperatures below 80 degrees, you can pretty much bet that that's gonna be why it's pushing. But occasionally you'll get an animal that continues to push regardless just a restless animal. So let me show you what I do with those special cases. Okay, now the first thing I did with this animal is move it to a larger tub. It gives her a little bit more space, but it also gives her a little bit less leverage to actually be able to push on something because the new environment is taller than the last. But the next thing I do is add a bunch of hide spots. Take a look at this little guy over here. He was a notorious pusher as a baby, and you can see he's doing just fine now. But I mean, this was the type of snake where his lips would always be inflamed and just very frustrating for a keeper. So we went ahead and moved him into one of these tubs. And what you'll notice is I took some of my little hides that are just little baskets I got from the dollar store and I just scatter them all around his cage. By having all these additional objects in there, it kind of confuses him a little bit and it distracts him if he starts trying to push. It also gives him multiple different areas to hide in different temperature zones so that if that was the problem that he was pushing, it'll go ahead and correct itself. Now, if you don't have those hides, one thing that works great is some kind of a shredded paper. I use this packing material, which already has holes in it, and I tear it into little strips. And basically, an insecure snake is the snake that pushes. So you can go ahead and throw this inside the tub and actually fill it up with this stuff that replicates the leaf litter that it would have naturally in the wild and that'll really calm them down. The only thing you wanna watch out for is it's not soaking water up out of their water bowl. But otherwise you can fill their whole cage with it from top to bottom if you like. 
and the snake will be able to hide around everywhere it goes and feel much more secure. That will likely stop its pushing. If you have it in a large enclosure, like with glass fronts, you're going to probably want to go ahead and tape up some paper over the front to give it a little bit more privacy and help it to calm down. Now you guys know, if you've watched any of my videos before, I'm a huge advocate when it comes to dwarf and super dwarf retics especially in providing a shelf within that cage because it gives them a space to hide underneath and a place to kind of perch up top and observe their environment and both of those things gives them a greater sense of security. So if you have a pusher, go ahead and give a few of these things a try. I hope that helps you guys. Have a great weekend. And like I said, stay tuned for some interesting Talk'em Up Tuesdays and Free Tip Fridays while I'm on the road. Peace out.